What does a surgeon have to do with the city health? It's a reasonable question. Maybe it is the daily encounter with human death, suffering and illnesses which made me ask the question. Could it be different? What can we change in our environment for uh, to pres uh, preserve human health? Is it so difficult and costly or it is a matter of just a little bit more effort and care? In order to bypass a PowerPoint presentation, I will try to expose myself as a live uh, PPS with some handmade slides and uh, frames. Firstly, I would like to express gratitude to the people that gave me the opportunity to tell you the story of my struggle for a healthy urban environment in the society in which I am living in. Elena Dimitrova, associate professor in one of the most respectful universities in Bulgaria, the University of Architecture, Civil Engineering and Geodesy in Sofia. Architect with special scientific interests in the area of urbanism and one of the participants in the Healthy Urban Environment project. Rusica Zlatanova, architect, urban and nature park management planner, author of diverse projects and articles, editor, a friend. And Vladimir Milkov, estimable architect, environmental activist, and chairman of the Chamber of the Architects in Bulgaria. I would also like to thank to Mr. Bob Dylan, a rock star and Nobel Prize winner. And that's why uh, you will see the end of this expose. I wouldn't bore you with my CV. Instead, I will give you some examples of my social activity and struggle for people's health beyond my direct narrow professional duties. Personal example is of particular importance. I was more than 100 times a voluntary blood donor in my life. To some of you, it might seem a little bit crazy, but in the 80s, an effective vaccine was created against the deadly Congo hemorrhagic fever. I was one of the volunteers who were injected with the processed Congo fever virus. The purpose to let my body grow maximum antibodies against the Congo hemorrhagic fever for producing a vaccine against this deadly illness. The risk brought me the badge of honor of the Red Cross, but that's not really the point. If you believe that something must be changed, you have to take part no matter of risk and to risk too. So believe facts and actions, not empty words. As you may know, or maybe not, the death has three main gates to enter the human body. The brain, the heart and the lungs. Mother Nature hides the first one under a strong armor, the skull. The heart is laid deep in the armored box named chest. The third one, the lungs are in a direct, constant and deep contact with the city environment, literally immersed and soaked in the atmosphere. As the process of breathing is an inevitable condition for our life, Inspirium breath in, Experium breath out, from the very first to the last moment of our life. Many of the lung diseases, such as allergic illnesses, uh, the danger of tobacco smoking, occupational diseases, the role of domestic insects as, as allergens, even the so-called orphan disease. For example, the lung sarcoidosis also caused by printer and toner cassette dust are well known out of the narrow medical circles. But you must know, there are permanent town killers lurking in ambush they stay neglected. The radioactive gas are gone and the so-called finders particles. These are a real mortal danger and risk for deadly lung illnesses of the city inhabitants. Please note that some of the components of the finders particles are even smaller than viruses. And the parameters of the urban atmosphere, life-giving or deadly, are for good or for evil, in the hands of the architects, urban planners, engineers and constructors. But let me say first something about the Radon. At present, it is the second and maybe now the first reason for lung cancer. After the ban of tobacco smoking, in public places, maybe more than 20 percentages of the lung affected deaths in the city are don't cause uh, uh, lung cancer. Look, please, for the United States of America. Also, another one, the radon risk if you never smoked. 
This is a very impressive statistics. And this one, how radon is uh, contaminating dwellings. So, in the town I'm living in, Burgas, a big city on the Black Sea coast, I struggled for more than 20 years against the stubborn decision makers until in 2012. Well, luckily, the new mayor decided to embrace my plan for identifying and mitigating the harmful and noxious effect of the radon in the kindergartens. Our small team, Professor Presiano and myself, find alarming levels of radon concentration in different spots of the town, two kindergartens, and all the tested dwellings. All the tests we made pro bono. Just a second, look at this. Here is a potential use of unwanted or damaged compact discs. Set them aside as home radon detectors. Alpha particles mark polycarbonate plastics as they collide with it. And after chemical processing the CD DVD, the traces are enlarged enough to make them visible with a regular microscope. The method of identification of radon contamination is uh, a bit elementary. All you need to do is part with an unnecessary compact disc you have in your co-home, CD or DVD. I will short the time uh, to explain it all, but you are welcome to contact Professor Presianov or me anytime. The method we use will give you a very low cost and immediate snapshot of what is the situation at the moment. It is the actual level of the alpha radiation. And you don't need to wait for a year or more and to go through a large and complicated procedure to receive the result. You must check constantly the radon levels. Look at this. After the contamination is identified, all you need to do is to follow a few elementary architectural solutions with no more than a few hundred dollars in its most expensive version. In the common case, the cost for mitigation is zero. All you need is forced ventilation. Look at this. Please note, according to the Environment Pollution Agency in the USA, there is not safe levels of radon. Fortunately, an administrative act of radon protection of buildings was recently enforced in Bulgaria. Ordinance number RD-02-20-1 of 2009-19 on the technical requirements for buildings for protection against radon. Unfortunately, it is not currently being implemented. The next extremely harmful, harmful agent for the population, for the city inhabitants, for the urban interacting system, buildings, homes, streets, social communications and social behavior, in contrast of the radon, which is a totally natural product, this one, the so-called finest particles, is generated in our everyday activity and is of mainly total synthetic and anthropogenic origin. The so-called anthropogenic effect of the environmental and human health, finest particles, is a mixture of solid and liquid particles that are suspended in the air. These are categorized into coarse, fine and ultrafine. Fine, fine dust particles refers to particles that have diameter less than two and a half microns, more than 100 times thinner than a human hair, and remain suspected for longer. PM01 that have diameter less than 0 0.1 <coughs> microns cut off in 1979, the U.S. National Resource Council said that measuring particles by weight without regard to particle size has little utility for judging health effects. Particle size is therefore a vital consideration when it comes 
to air pollution and health. Please, this diagram for comparison and effect. Thank you. Yes, volcano eruption expels colossal mass of toxic gases as well as fine and ultra fine uh, dust particles, but volcanoes are unpreventable. Unlike volcanoes, the self intoxication of society is preventable. These particles are also the primary reason for occurrence of smog in cities. Particularly, all the anthropogenic fine dust particles are coming from China, India, Iran, and some African countries. So the cliche that United States of America and industrial countries are main perpetrators for the atmospheric pollution is not a truth. Exposed to PM2.5, in short term impacts include says, nose, a prolonged exposure to PM2.5 can cause permanent respiratory problems such as asthma, chronic bronchitis, oxidative stress, lung cancer, and cardiopulmonary diseases. And never don't forget for children's health. Coalescing of uh, fine, ultra fine dust particles, PM01, are the major source of PM2.5. Why do I draw the attention to the European audience to this factor? Because of our bitter experience and some conclusions one can make about institutional hypocrisy, bureaucratic lack of empathy and formal justice. You may have heard about Kronospan, a European multinational company that manufactures and distributes wood-based pa panels that are used for flooring, furniture, etc. etc. Please note that this company has a lot of industrial activity in many countries, from Belarus to China, few of them in Poland and in Bulgaria too. According to official information, their production complies with all the environmental and healthcare standards, which implies any factory out of cities, out of municipal borders, except for two cases, the plant in the Polish city Mielec and the plant in Burgas, Bulgaria. According to the local residents of Mielec in 2016, Kronospan factory in their city is pumping large quantities of dust and gas into air. Kronospan does not systematically monitor the volume of harmful substances it emits and the factory is not subject to regular emissions checks, etc. The citizens of Mielec sent a letter to the European Commission and received an evasive, ambiguous answer. And from the first sentence of the answer to you uh, could feel the dead breath of the Euro bureaucracy. This happened some five years ago, and it is also maybe an explanation why the citizens of Burgas made no more steps to defend their healthcare and ecological rights. So what can people living in Europe do? There is a good optimistic example, hope, because it is a synthesis of urbanistic kind of thinking and anthropogenic network initiated in 2015 from the citizens of the great city of Stuttgart. In 2015, they launched the Good Data Info project to draw everyone's attention to the chronic air pollution problems, including fine dust particles and ultra fine dust particles, of course, in their city, and the chronic reluctance of authorities to take measures to solve the problem. Look that an info is a citizen science project initiated by OK Lab Stuttgart. It is part of the Code of Germany program of the Open Knowledge Foundation, which deals with issues related to air quality. This project now covers almost all the world, including some parts of Bulgaria, mainly in the capital Sofia. Practically, you can build your own environmental pollution monitoring station on your own window, roof or terrace, deck, balcony, and practically with no money, thus be a part of your city, national, or pan-European and global air condition network. It is a good and inspiring example of civic activism. Look at this. This is the European chart two days ago. And you may see, may see how they cover uh, all the northern or the industrial part of Europe and another details you you will find. You may call me Fattore Provocativo or Agent Provocateur. 
I just try to provoke your curiosity in such an absolutely important matter, radon contamination particles, subject that must find place in the educational programs of the architectural and urban, urban planning uh, faculties and schools. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to a few friends and colleagues that supported me this year in my efforts to achieve better environmental conditions and health. As follows, Professor Dr. Dubromir Presianov, Department of Nuclear Physics in the Sofia University, Klement Ohritsky. Dr. Kosta Kostov, Professor of Respiratory Medicine in the Sofia Medical University. And Dr. George Chaldakov, Professor Emeritus, President of the Cell Biology Scientific Society, Editor-in-Chief of scientific journals with highest impact factor in the area of the biology and medicine. And Bob Dylan, why? For the idea I took from his clip, Subterranean Homesick Goose. Okay. This is the idea I took from him. Feel the music, enjoy the knowledge.